Hey guys, so I, I picked up this old drill. I like these old brush drills. This one is made by North Brothers. It's a Yankee 1555. I've seen other videos with these, so I know they're not necessarily uncommon, but this is a little nicer than some of the other drills that I have. It's difficult to make out the writing. I've kind of wiped the grease away there. But this one has multiple settings. It's a ratcheting drill. Uh, it has a high and low speed that's built into the handle, which is kind of a neat feature. And it's so gummed up just trying to move it through the settings and get it to turn. It is so stiff and so dirty. Uh, this came in a cabinet I'd bought of miscellaneous tools, and so I've been waiting to get a chance to take it apart and clean it up. That's the little gear for the high and low speed, which is built into the handle. Uh, anyway, it was, it's an interesting old drill. I'm going to clean it up and try to do some nickel plating on some of the parts, which I've not done before. Uh, the chuck here especially, the nickel is in really bad shape, but the writing is still uh, legible. So anyway, we'll take her all apart and see what we can do with it. I pretty much wash everything in mineral spirits. It's just the most effective thing I found. So it made some real progress. Uh, you can now read this writing pretty good. Uh, the plane, left hand ratchet, right hand, right hand double ratchet, and lock. I everything works pretty good now. I it's such a delicate mechanism. These little these little fingers in here, these little metal pieces are so small and uh, now you can clearly see how they operate so anyway Okay, we got everything all cleaned up. I like everything to just be as pristine as I can before I do any painting. Uh, this gets everything down to just, you know, basic cast. 
I'm happy with everything cleaned up. It's mostly in very good shape. One thing that I noticed as I was working on this, this thing has just a ton of little lubrication, little oil holes on it, and every one was just blocked up solid. I had to spend a lot of time getting that cleaned out, but uh, I'm happy with how it came out. And so now we'll move on to, uh, we'll disassemble this handle and we'll work on uh, getting started with our nickel plating. So this little pawl comes out. Uh, there's two small uh, little pins and springs come out of there. Uh, there's the other one. We'll get this uh, cleaned up, degreased. You can see the nickel plating's in really poor shape. It's all flaking off. So I don't think there was any way to bring this back other than to replate it. Okay. Okay. So this is where I'm making my nickel acetate. So there's lots of videos available on this. Basically, you're taking two nickel rods, you're dissolving them in a salt vinegar solution, and once this is completed, this will be very green. Uh, it'll be a saturated nickel solution, and then I will take my part and just one, and I'll use it as my sacrificial anode, I will take and I will immerse that in there, and it will deposit that nickel onto here. And I've watched a lot of videos. I'm not going into great depth on this because there's so many videos, tutorials that show you how to do this. But uh, we'll see how it turns out. They say you've got to have your part very, very smooth if you want it to turn out good because any imperfection is going to show up through this nickel plating. So that's the plan. Uh, so While I'm waiting for my nickel solution to gain strength, I'll do a little painting. And... When I redo stuff, this is why I don't I don't call it restoration because I don't it it's not a big deal to me, I guess, if it's not completely original. I feel like by painting these rough cast parts, it just really sets them off. I'm very careful, you know, I never paint any gears or teeth or anything that's going to make metal to metal contact. But uh I I just like the way it looks and I think it really makes it stand out. So, to, before I plate this, you know, I've kind of been just working it with the die grinder a little bit. It's got to be really smooth. If there's any roughness or texture, that is just going to show through the nickel plating. So I've gotten a little bit of it smoothed out. I'm going to do some wet sanding. I'm going to do some buffing. And I'm going to try and work this until it's as smooth as I can get it. If, if it looks totally polished before you plate it, then that's your best chance of it looking really nice once, once you're finished. First, I wash this real good with grease and wax remover, get it as clean as I can, and then I've just got a detergent there. A lot of people use simple green. Uh, this is just some basic dish soap. I scrub it really good, and then in this flat pan, I've just got distilled water and rinse it real good. And then, you know, you're going to suspend it from a copper wire, and then you'll hook up your electrode which my power source is just a little uh it's a little dc universal charger people use cell phone chargers and all kinds of things so when you put it in there and you apply a little electricity to it it's going to sit and bubble and uh i guess that's just the process taking place so let's see what we've got So what I kind of learned about this is like when you're just a DIY person doing it this at home, it's pretty basic and they a professional 
they would add other things to this like brighteners uh, I think I'm sure it's a much more involved process but some of that discoloration will polish right off they you will see that you've got to do a little polishing uh, it doesn't really take much I was using this metal polish and as soon as I started working on it it, it shined it right up it's never going to be probably like chrome but all in all the results were pretty positive I don't bother to video it because you've seen how it works now but I pretty much re-nickled every piece uh, the chuck any little pieces of hardware I kinda tried to replate everything so you'll see that as the video progresses you may have noticed earlier that this is missing the stationary handle that goes uh, down near the bottom of the drill so I'm gonna try and make a copy I'll make it as close as I can to the original I'm not much of a woodworker but I'll do my best here and then we'll see if we can finish it as close to the same color as the original this piece that I end up putting on here the other is nickel this one is bronze the only reason I felt like this was okay is because you'll see later when I reassemble there's a lock nut that is brass that this is going to be right next to so they kind of complement one another I tapped some rough threads into this and then I just took a bolt and I end up putting some JB weld on it and screwing it in there and letting it set up I don't think that's probably ever going to come loose So I cut that off and I kind of just dressed up the threads a little bit with a file and I think it's going to make a nice solid handle. It's not a perfect match to the other but better than what was there before which was nothing. And then from there I got some, uh, I use a paste wax whenever I, before I assemble these gears I find that it's a good preservative it keeps everything from rusting obviously it's a good lubricant too and it dust doesn't stick to it and then for these bearings I usually uh, I like to use a synthetic grease on them it doesn't tend to run out over time uh, I really like that stuff This is the bearing that takes all the thrust from the drill. And then this is that little brass locking collar I was talking about. It just comes down, uh, locks down, and keeps that other nut from backing off.
this handle once I get it pushed in there I just give it a real light peening it doesn't take much to hold it in and frankly this drill is not going to see much use so just enough to keep it from working its way back out Okay, so it's all done. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, it's night and day from when I started. My two handles are not a perfect match, but I think they look pretty good. I just can't believe how smooth this thing works. It was so stiff to begin with, and now it just turns good. I love the ratcheting sound. Got it all cleaned up, so it has neat functions. That plain like if we go a uh, right hand double for instance <clears throat> it turns the same way no you can ratchet it either way and it'll keep the chuck rotating the same direction that's an interesting feature and then uh... just go to straight right hand and then it just ratchets like you would expect it to <clears throat> on this inside this is our high and low speed flip it over that way it extends that innermost uh, that little stop so then it we'll spin it a half speed take this guy click him over and it's double so it's just whether it engages the inside or the outside set. I'm really happy with how all the nickel plating turned out. It's not perfect, but if you saw what it looked like before, it's quite an improvement. I can still easily make out the markings. I mean, this thing's been used, and the chuck was pretty scratched up and abused, so it's never going to be perfect, but... I'm really happy with it. The handle has a indexing pin so you can take it out and turn it 90 degrees. All in all, just really happy with how it turned out. It's a really nice working drill.